I've helped over 20 companies implement AI internally, from Fortune 500 organizations to teams of 50 people, and all of them are making the same mistakes. If you just give me nine minutes, I'll show you the exact four-step funnel that I use to help these companies identify exactly where to apply AI to get the highest impact on their business. And trust me, speaking from experience, it makes the starting process so much easier. So if you're interested, let's dive in. All right, so before we jump into the four-step process or four-step funnel, I wanna share two different personas that I tend to run into when I work with clients like this. One camp on the left-hand side is the person that's very eager with AI. So they've applied AI to all these different processes, trying to automate as much as possible, but quickly realize and are disappointed by what AI can do because they've tried to do too much with it uh, in such a short time frame. And then the other camp on the right-hand side is the group that's overwhelmed with all the different tools that are available and all the different AI models that they can choose from. So of these two, I often run into the right-hand side more than the left, but both of which have mistakes they run into and downfalls associated to each persona. And the way I've gone about trying to fix this is a simple four-step process or four-step funnel. And each one of these steps has an associated question and subset of questions that one needs to ask themselves or be asked by a consultant. Asking this question then narrows your focus on the different processes that you want to automate first with AI based off of the impact it can have in your business. And these are the four steps we'll walk through in depth. So we have the business goal, the bottlenecks associated to that, the functions inside of this, and then the activities inside of this. But before we jump into those details, one thing I do want to call out is that if you are doing this and you are a consultant or somebody that's advising another person on how to apply AI to their business, I often realize that people have a distorted vision when they talk about AI. So when I have a conversation with a business when I'm doing advising on how to implement AI, we focus on the business first. We don't focus on AI. And the reason we're focusing on the business first is that often if you talk about tech first, it distorts the vision of the person that's thinking about what's possible with AI going back to the first persona group that I mentioned previously. So I highly recommend focusing on the business challenges and the business bottlenecks and goals and not AI. That always comes later once we've identified what to prioritize and what to automate. So now we'll go to the first section of the four, the four steps or the four phases in the funnel. So the first one, we have a question here that is a question that I often ask associated to the business goal itself. And the question here is, what is the one priority goal that you have for your business in the, number, in the next 12 to 18 months? A really important part here is priority goal. One, only one goal the one priority goal for the business, and we want to set a reasonable time frame. When asking this question, I often get more than one goal. So even though I've emphasized one, I may get back maybe probably five to six or maybe even 10 goals. Here are some examples of goals that you might hear. So one, or for yourself. So one is decrease customer churn from 20% 20, uh, 20 to 12%, or increase profit margins from 40% to 60%. Another one could be to increase qualified leaves per month from X to Y. So these are different types of goals businesses may have for themselves within that set time frame. The key of this phase and this part of the process is prioritizing and choosing one single goal. So instead of having a bunch of goals, you want to choose the priority goal and you want to focus in on that goal for the rest of the funnel. So priorities are key. Quick pause in your regular programming. This ad is brought to you by me. So below is a link to a free 30-day AI insight series where you get 30 days of AI insights of how to apply AI to your business and also your day-to-day -day work. So if that's at all interesting to you, Below is the link, check it out. With that being said, let's dive back in. So once we've identified the one business goal we wanna focus on, the next step is understanding the associated bottlenecks to achieving this goal. Because if we've set a goal for the next 12 to 18 months, the question we're likely gonna ask ourselves is something along these lines, which is what bottlenecks are preventing you from achieving the one goal that we've set out previously? And there will be multiple bottlenecks between where you are today and where you wanna be in the future. So this is our, this is our trajectory. And in between these, there's a series of bottlenecks that if relieved, we can get to that future state much faster. And here are just some examples of different types of bottlenecks that I've heard from clients. So one here, the first is identifying and contacting qualified leads takes too much time. So it's too, too time consuming to do that. Another one is someone's capacity to serve new clients is actually maxed out. Or an alternative could be the time it takes to fulfill a client request is too slow. These are a variety of bottlenecks associated to achieving a goal. Again, the really important part of this phase and this step of the process is prioritizing the bottleneck that you feel that if relieved would have the biggest impact on your goal. Because again, we're gonna have a series of bottlenecks. So say these are all of our bottlenecks. Now our goal is to rank prioritize these based off of whatever variable that matters most to you in your business. So that could be, if I relieve this bottleneck, it gets me closer to the goal. 
and or it's the easiest bottleneck to relieve with AI automation. I recommend starting with the first. So say we identify this as being the biggest bottleneck. So if we relieve this completely and automated it, it's going to move us 80% of the way towards our goal instead of the other ones maybe only moving us one or 2%. Now that we understand the bottleneck that matters most to us, the next step is understanding what functions make up that bottleneck. And that's gonna be our next phase of the process. And that's the simplified question that we would ask. So what are the functions that make up this bottleneck? And here are just some very practical examples of what that could look like. So in this case, we've identified one bottleneck already. And that bottleneck that we're going to identify here is the ability for a subcontractor to respond to a bid. So a bid goes out to do some sort of contracting job. They have to then write a proposal for that bid. So we'll say prop for proposal. To write this proposal, say it takes them two weeks. So that's the, that's the scenario, right? So right now it takes us two weeks to write a proposal for a bid, and that's too time consuming. We wanna be faster so we can outbid both our competitors for a single bid or out, yeah, out propose our, our competitors for a bid, as well as be able to send out proposals for more bids for different contracts. This is our scenario. So the functions associated to this process of creating proposals is first, people have to aggregate specification information from the manufacturer of four different types of materials and manuals. That's time consuming. Another one is finding and repurposing previous proposals it takes time. And in addition to that, we need to understand the associated uh, costs and calculations for the overhead for that project, as well as the profits associated to it, so we can then price accordingly for the proposal. These are just some examples of different types of functions that make up the overall bottleneck that we're trying to relieve, which is the writing of proposals much faster. And once we've identified these functions, we have to go one step further, because each function likely has a subset of activities inside of it. So for example, the let's go with the first one here. So to aggregate specifications from projects based on manufacturer materials. So the question here is, what activities make up this function? What exactly does the person have to do? And that's what this activity section does. We'll ask another question is what are the associated activities that make up the function? And more practically or uh, speaking or an analogy is if I strap a GoPro to your chest here, if I put a GoPro on your chest and you do that specific function, what are the associated activities that make that up? And then when I speak with clients about this, you wanna map that out as detailed as possible. Because if you map these activities out effectively, then you can start to automate them more easily. And after you've taken the time to map these out, so let's say that we have, let's say that we have one, two, three activities. These are all activities associated to the function that we're trying to automate. Then the next step is ranking these activities. So we wanna figure out which of these do we wanna focus on first to automate. And there's different ways that we can rank these. We can rank them on two variables. One is impact and the other one is ease. So impact is saying if I automate this specific activity, it'll increase my ability to get closer to achieving the goal we discussed previously more than the other two. So say this one is what we wanna focus on based off of impact, that's one variable. Another approach is saying ease of implementation. So of these three activities, which one is the easiest to automate based off of what's available with AI tools today and AI models today. And often what I can hear sometimes, people will state is that I don't know the answer to this question. So if I choose to go to the second variable, which is ease of implementation, I have no idea what's easier based off of what's available or the art of the possible with AI models and tools today. If that's true, then you can easily, as always, just rely on AI. Because in the end, my friends, it's turtles all the way down. It's AI all the way down. We just keep on asking AI for everything. And in this case, um, we have AI that can help. And what you can do is you can provide it as much context as possible to get an increased or better or more accurate answer. So you give it the goals, you give it the bottlenecks, the activities, the functions, et cetera. And then when you give it the activities, you ask it based off of what's available today with tools as of today's date, I want you to help rank prioritize these activities based off of which ones would be easier to automate. And then, the, and then it will give you back a rank prioritized list of its understanding. So you, I would recommend asking multiple models the same question with the same context and throw it at all of the highest intelligence models. So Grok4 currently, Cloud4 currently, um, GPT-03, et cetera. So the, the highest quality intelligence models with the highest reasoning, see what their outputs are and then compare the outputs. And then boom, we have everything that we need to start with implementing AI in our business effectively instead of wasting time either applying it to everything and being disappointed or not knowing where to start because we've identified the priority business goal We've identified the priority bottleneck, the associated functions to that, and the activities inside of each one of those functions. We then figured out inside of those activities, where do we want to start spending our time to automate? And then we're going to work through that list. And as you can tell, the name of the game here is identifying where to implement AI first. And then to do that, we need to rank prioritize what matters most to us. And maybe by the end of this, you're like, hey, 
I neither had the, t- the attention nor the, uh, the time to do this, but you're in luck because there are people like me that exist to assist with this process. And if that's you, below is the link that you can click that'll show you three different ways that you and I can work together. So the first one is figuring out exactly where to apply AI, where it's most suitable for your business. The second one is me giving you a roadmap exactly of how to implement this AI once you've identified the where. And then the third is me doing everything on your behalf. So if that sounds interesting to you, click the link below. And as always, if you enjoyed this, reshare it with your friends and internet. I'll see you next time.